I'm, I'm kind of going to start over with this little baby and show you what I started, okay? So, my hands are a mess. My table's a mess. Uh, I don't even have a palette. You can see I was out of paper plates, so I just, like, grabbed some plastic <laughs> off of the, out of the trash from my canvas. So, let me show you what I'm doing. So I have started with, hey Michelle, I started with a little bit of this Calypso Blue and Anita's White and just kind of base coated my canvas in a circular motion. So I'm gonna demo real quick on this little baby and then we'll get back to this one that we're working on. So I put a little bit of white and I just started brushing it on kind of in a circle. Cause I want to make end up having a big circle that was excessive let's get some of that off <laughs> we'll get it on the side so basically I started with my white like that then I put the whole Yeti gang that's right Miss Maury okay now I'm gonna put a couple drops of this Calypso blue which is like one of my favorite colors so same thing I'm just going to Paint my canvas in that blue, and I'm just kind of going in a circle. I got way too much paint. I'm not very good at painting on little bitty things, obviously. So, once I get this blue color, and it's kind of all in a circle, we'll just keep going until it kind of spreads out. I fell so much in love with that cute little butterfly we did day before yesterday that I thought I need to do a um, dragonfly with the same technique. So that's what we're doing. So I got a little bit and as light as dark as you or dark as you want, I got a little bit of that blue and white on my canvas. I'm gonna rinse my brush a little and then I'm going to go into white only. That's my white right there. And I'm making kind of like a moon, okay? A moon glow. It's gonna, it, this really should dry. I mean, let's see if I can drop, blow dry. Let me see if I can turn on my little fan and dry that up just a little bit. See, ill prepared, ill prepared. That's what happens. Just have to go with the flow. Forgive me if you're new. I'm not normally totally crazy. So I'm gonna dry this just a little bit, enough that I can put some white like we have here, kind of just a glowy moon thing. You did pick a good day, Heather. Just a little glowy moon thing going on because we are gonna put a dragonfly on this piece. And I wanted it to kind of have um, a colorful background with a little bit of a moon showing. So I'll show you. I'm going to work on this a little bit more while this dries, okay? Because I need this to dry about 90%. The one I'm going to do, this one is the one we're going to finish. And this one is a 6 by 6 just like the uh, butterfly. So it's kind of going to be like a little pairing. So I'm going to get in my white back to my original. And I've got a fairly small brush, so what I want is the center to have a good bit of color and then it to fade out a little bit around the moon, kind of like the glow around the moon. And I do have just a tiny droplet of, hello Emma, hola, a tiny droplet of Gilder Oak, which is kind of a, a burnt, um, a... Uh, ochre or a dark yellowy color for those who don't really know what ochre is it's kind of a a mustardy dark yellow let me see if i can get some of that off so to add around the outside of that moon just a little so it's not just all solid white so we're going to keep filling that in until we're happy and i'm going to bring some of it out around the rest of the canvas just kind of a dry brush. So a little more, bit more white to my center and just drag it out till you love it. Okay, now we're gonna let this one dry. We'll go back to this sucker. 
Okay, so we're gonna just do a mini version of this. So I'm gonna get into my white and I'm gonna start in the center and give myself, and you notice I'm not doing it dead center in the middle of the canvas. I'm like, I'm an off center kind of chick. So uh, I almost always do things off center. So I want the moon to be really nice and white in the middle. Now I'm gonna dip into that ochre a little with the same brush. And I'm gonna kind of work around the outside Kind of keeping in your circle. You can add more white in if you have too much yellow. And then we're going to just kind of bring out that color to cover most of our canvas. So it's just kind of that glow around the moon, okay? Got it? Let me fill in that center a little more. So it's just kind of a the thought of a moon. <laughs> we'll put that away. So that's how I got to where I am now. I'm gonna have to move this because the fan is wanting to blow it all over the place now. And if it blows onto my clothes, I'm gonna be mad. So we'll move that. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to the middle. Hey Georgie, how are you? Miss your face. Hate the COVID. So just a little more moon, as much or as little as you like. And I'm actually gonna offload my brush a little bit on my paper towel. And I'm gonna get a smidge, not too much, just a smidge of yellow, of the uh, gilded oak on my, I gotta throw that away, on my brush, just a little. And I am gonna come around and just bring some of that all the way down. I'll show you this close up in just a second so you can see what I'm doing because you probably can't. But can you see how down here at the bottom, I'm just adding a faint stroke of color. See that? Spectacular. Now guys, check this out. I'm trying to get this where you can see it all. Okay, so I went ahead and pre-cut my little pieces for my dragonfly, okay? His wings are made out of these little glass globes that you can buy. They're like little Christmas ornaments, but they're a little heavier because they're hand-blown. Uh, glass globes, I get these from a glass blower, and he gives me all the ones that are boo-boos, okay? The ones that don't turn out good. So if you uh, didn't see me do the butterfly, you might wanna check that out. I'm gonna put this in front of the fan. Check that out so you can see how I cut my little, I'm gonna set them on this because it might be hard to see. So you can see how I cut my little wings, okay? So basically what I did was I took some scraps from the globe like this is part of the same globe that was broken. So I took my scraps and I used a black Sharpie. Let me find it. I used a black Sharpie to kind of sketch out, let me move this, sketch out the shape of my wing onto the inside curve of, whoops, of my little pieces, okay? And then I just used my scoring tool, this, to kind of trace sections, like you have to go in straight lines. You can't like, you can't score that curve. You would have to come down here and score a straight line, like right there. See, I broke it. And that happens all the time, okay? but. I, this one's a really thin piece and I was being a little too heavy handed, but if you just score your piece lightly, not breaking. See, I'm pushing too hard. Let me get another piece that's a little thicker. These, these thin ones are super fragile. Let me get this piece. So if I wanted to cut this in half, that's a good example of what not to do, <laughs> right? So if I wanted to cut this into a shape, I would mark my line with my pen. 
in the curve of the piece, not on the outside, okay? So now I'm gonna take my scoring tool and score on that line I just drew. Then using gloves, don't do that what I just did. Thank you, Linda. You can snap it and little by little carve it into these little pieces that we are going to use to make our um, dragonfly. But I did this in on the Butterfly Live on Wednesday. So for um, better instruction on that, uh, go check out that Butterfly Live because I cut several pieces out of globes on that live. So refer back. I think we're dry. Yes, we are. Let me put this away. So what I'm gonna do now is make myself a cute little dragonfly. These are gonna be his wings cut out of the globe. And for his body, I am using string beads. These are several different kinds of string beads that I bought at the Hobby Lobby. And if you know what string beads are, right? They are beads on a string. <laughs> I'm gonna set these right here for a second. So they all came on a string like this. At Hobby Lobby, you can get these at Michael's too. The wheeled nippers, because Robin, the glass is so thin, if I try to use my wheeled nippers, it won't, they're too, um, they won't clamp down. I'll show you for example. They won't fit between the space here, okay? It's too thin. Does that make sense? So if I take my little piece, the glass is thinner than the uh, nippers, so you can't do that. You have to score very carefully and then just break with your hands because this glass is super thin. So I'm using string beads from the Hobby Lobby or Michaels. I always buy when these are on sale. A lot of times they'll be 30, 40% off. And that's when I go and just peruse the bead aisle and buy anything that makes my heart go pitter patter. Um, so, what I did was go through my little bucket of fun and found some string beads that I want to use for my dragonfly. They're various sizes, so I'll show you what I'm going to do. The first thing I like to do is figure out where his wings are going to be nice, okay? So, let's get his wings kind of situated. I like it to be a little equal. I don't want it to be like everything on one side. So we want to make sure we have enough room for both wings, all right? Yeah, actually, um, I have a grinding tool. It's like one of those electric grinders for glass. And I was going to, you can like grind down. It will break sometimes, but it, you can grind down into the shape you want with that thing. But it is hotter than blue blazes in my garage, and you have to do it out there. And I ain't about that life today. I am not about that life today, so we are going to just do, do it like I did this. Okay, so I have, I like to always have, I'm going to scoop this over here so you can kind of see what I'm working with. But I like to have a bigger bead for his cute little head. And then I like to get smaller, 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 and smaller as it goes. Okay, so then here's his little body. And then the rest of his body starts. And I have all of these little beads. And then I get a little bit smaller. And then I have a couple that are teeny tiny. So I like it to start big and go tiny uh, at the bottom. So we're going to do that. So my, I like the way I like where my um, wings are now on my piece. Are we upside down? I think we're upside down. Hang on, that drives me crazy. I don't know what's what anymore. Let me try this and see if this is better. Totally upside down. Hang on. Oh, good for you, Liz. Yeah, there we go. What was going on with that? Now you can see what I can see. Law have mercy, girls. 
Okay, better. Now you got me. We're all together now. I might have, I might have to send mine down to one of you girls and get y'all to grind mine down. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, better. Okay, so I'm gonna scoot this over. Hang on. Now my phone wants to die. So you see, see guys, I don't do well if I'm not prepared. Okay, so let me see if I can get this a little better centered too. I keep scooting over out of the, out of the view, don't I? See, not prepared. Okay, that time. Okay, so I'm gonna use these cute little beads as his body. So, um, you remember when we did the butterfly, I don't really wanna glue these down because I uh, like to resin the, both sides of that. After the blank comment, <laughs> Liz, the, the ex-husband, as an LSU fan, so I couldn't help myself. I love you, girl. You know I love you more than wine, but I ain't about the LSU life. You'll have to just give me some grace on that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, though, is for sure glue down my beads because they are wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. So I am going, and, I'm, and I have my glass here so I can know where to put my beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little dot of glue where I, where I know his head's gonna be. So we're gonna start there. Then I'm gonna scoot these out a little so I can get, I don't want them too far away because I still wanna kinda have my eyeballs on what I'm doing. So then I can start with my the rest of his little cute body. So I'm just gonna add a little glue to hold the beads still. He's going to be adorable, Heather. And I like to give him a little curve. So let's just start adding. We'll do that next bead right there. Kind of let them touch. And then we're going to start adding the little body pieces. A little bit at a time. There's another little body. And then I'm going to start to curve just a little because I like him to have a little curve to him. So there. Now we're gonna do, hang on, make any adjustments while the glue's still wet. We're gonna add a little more glue. This glue makes me mad. <laughs> hey, Patty from Michigan, thanks for being here. So we're gonna do one, a, a little bit of a smaller bead. And then we got a couple of these teeny baby ones. There's one, and there's one. So this is our dragonfly body. Let me show you how cute, how cute. So his wings are made from the uh, those little glass orbs that I had and his body is made of just glass beads, okay? Now I'm gonna do one more thing before we start to resin. I'm totally ill-prepared, but we're gonna do one more thing. And you guys know that on our butterfly, let me grab him, he's so cute. On our butterfly, we made some little antenna with our paint pen, but Dragonflies don't really have antenna. This is our butterfly, and we made a little antenna with our paint pen. Uh, dragonflies don't really have antenna. They have little feet in the front. So I am going to use this graphic, and you don't even have to do this part if you don't want to. I just like to because I'm a freak that way. But uh, it's a graphic 05 needle drawer, and I'm just gonna give him right here some little feet. Right there. Just that tiny bit of detail. Just like it. See his little feet? Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna leave these here, but we are going to mix up some resin real quick like. Oh yes, they are not cheap at all, are they? 
Patty, we did a bee, boo. Have you not seen our bee? I'll post him. Uh, we actually had a five day bee challenge a couple of months ago, but I will post a bee. Uh, I will post him and see what you think, and maybe we'll do a baby bee like on a flower. I'm trying to do a bunch of different, um, a bunch of different, I lost my cups, a bunch of different little miscellaneous uh, art smalls, small art pieces um, for the next few weeks. So we're gonna be pretty busy doing that. So maybe we'll throw in a bee. But yes, I will tag you in a post where we did our bee. He's so stinking cute. So I'm gonna mix some resin real quick, So I'm, but I don't need but maybe less than an ounce, I think. So I'm gonna mix an ounce in my little teeny baby cups. I'm gonna put those cups here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my gloves on. Yes, it's a six by six. I'm gonna get my gloves on and we're gonna pour a little resin. I'm gonna mark my cups. These are uh, one ounce little medicinal cups I just got off eBay for when I do baby things. And I had these in my kits too. But I am going to mix, let's see if I can find it. I have to mark it because it's really hard to see. We're gonna make a half an ounce. So I'm gonna make that line with my pen. And on this one, I gotta find it again half an ounce, that way we don't go over. Mark that, because it's hard to see if you don't mark it. A ladybug, that would be so cute. We'll have to tint our own glass, Lisa. But yeah, I have a magnolia on my list. A frog would be adorable. I think a ladybug too. Good ideas. So what I use, the resin I use is called Art Resin. And thank you for the sprinkles, Elaine. Thank you for uh, letting your friends know that we're here and what we're doing. If you have a friend you think would like to uh, play along or uh, watch any of our vids, we'd love for you to let them know we're here. So I use Art Resin. It is, uh, yes, Claire, a whale. Um, I, it's a two-part resin epoxy, and you're going to use 50% hardener, 50% resin. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Yes, Judy, awesome. So I am going to do a half an ounce of hardener in one cup before my line goes away. Very slowly. Ooh. I have to get down here eye level to the cup so I don't over pour. Just barely, barely drizzling now. We're gonna get there any second now. Any second now. There we are. Okay, so that's a half of an ounce of hardener. We'll put this away. And now we'll move this here. We're gonna do a half an ounce in this cup of the resin. So let's pour this one. And you have to go slow because that, it kind of, it's like molasses. It takes a few minutes to get, uh, to show on the cup. And if you just pour to your line in any, in about 10 seconds, it's going to be a lot more in the cup than you thought you wanted. So there's a half an ounce of resin. So we got a half an ounce of hardener, a half an ounce of resin. Uh, Jerry, I'll post on the, pe on the uh, Shutter Circle page. I don't have that information right now, but I've just bought them on, either on Amazon or um, eBay. I'm the queen of both of those places, so one or the other, and I'll just have to let you know. I love these cups. So I'm gonna pour one into the other, so it's all in one cup. I'm gonna get out every drop that I can so that our mix is correct because the two biggest fails you will have when making something with resin is improper measuring or improper mixing. Those are very, very important. 
Okay, so we got all of that in one cup, and now we have to stir. Anybody want to, anybody here in the group want to give me three minutes on the clock? And I will answer, while I'm doing this, I will answer any questions you might have. What I'm, we're going to stir this for three minutes. That is the recommended amount of stirring time from Art Resin. And we're going to stir slowly and methodically so that we don't incorporate a ton of air bubbles into our, I'm looking around at my table and I don't see bubbles. Where are my bubbles? Law, have mercy, no bubbles. Amazon has them. I may have bought them from Amazon. Just look for uh, one ounce medicine cups, plastic, but I'll also post the link over in the shattered circle. So it might actually, if you go to the resources tab in the shattered circle, Jerry, there's probably a link in there for these cups. There's a link to my Amazon store and I, I'm almost certain these cups are on there. So thank you, Robin. Thank you, Lisa. Just somebody just let me know. I'm just going to keep stirring until my time is up and then we will, isn't this cute, Gigi? Then we'll pour our resin. I probably have too much, but that's okay because y'all know I got more stuff to resin right behind me. Not really right behind me, in front of me. <laughs> Ain't nothing behind me but a wall. I hear my kitty cat at the door too. He's, he does not like to be left out, but this is not a kitty cat friendly room. Can you resin over copper? Yeah, I mean, you can pretty much resin over anything that is a hard surface. Um, I don't know if it will patina the copper or if it will, um, you know, it, I, I'm gonna say this. I'm not 100% sure. You can probably go to artresin.com. I think that if it's a sheet of copper that's framed, that is not gonna like bend, or have any flexibility to it, I think you can probably do that. Um, you know, if it's something that's gonna be bent or, you know, if I have a lot of flexibility, I wouldn't because it's just gonna crack. But you can go to the Art Resin page and it probably has that answered on there because they're, they have the answer to everything, artresin.com. Wells are popular. I Love wells too. I actually have done a couple, but maybe we need to do a baby one because I'm working on smalls. So we'll do some smalls. Free copper butterflies. Oh, I would love to see those, sister. Are they three dimensional? I'd like to see those, Judy. Angel wings with the word Faye. Don't see the. It's in there. Look, Susan, I want you to go to the, our Facebook page and search for Angel Wings. It's in there. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, and uh, if somebody, if you'll go, Susan, into the uh, Facebook page for the Shattered Circle and, and just ask if, um, I would search it first and then ask if anybody knows where it is, because somebody is going to be able to point you in the right direction. If I get done with this before I have to go get in the shower to have dinner with my children's, I will tag you in that post, but we'll make sure you get it one way or another because I know it's in there. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do first is take my resin and I'm gonna pour it over my little beads very generously. So uh, let's just drizzle right on top of those beads. And what it does is covers the bead and then flows down around the sides and adheres that right to our canvas. So let's cover those beads first. Try not to wiggle them too much. Yeah, sometimes things are just, if you don't know exactly what to search for, but I think if you search for faith wings or angel wings, it should pop up. If not, just ask the question over there 
There's so much over there, it gets, things just kind of get lost in the shuffle sometimes. It's there though. Oh yeah, we got plenty of resin. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my fingers because I gotta use my fingers on the glass anyway. So yeah, Susan, look in the Facebook page because I did that. I haven't uh, gotten that far with transferring lives from this page onto the Shattered Circle. That was a piece I did here on Art Shattered public page. And so those are going to be on our private Facebook page for the Shattered Cir Circle. So go check that out. That's why you can't find it. It's over there. I know it can get confusing. I'm trying, you know, I'm a one man show, guys. And, you know, I'm trying my very best to get things done, but, ooh, Lord, it's a lot. And it takes a long time, not complaining. Love you guys, want you to have all the things, but it takes a long time to transfer one video. So, I'll get there. All right, I see a little some debris right here in my piece, so I'm going to get that off. I don't see anything else. So now what I'm gonna do is I put my wings on. So what I like to do, you're gonna wanna hone the edges of these little cut pieces. They're not terribly sharp uh, unless you have like a point. It, and this is thick enough that it's not terribly sharp. But if yours is, thank you, Cheryl. If yours is, just hone your edges a little bit with a stone or a brick, or you can just even take it outside and rub it on the pavement. Just be super careful because these pieces are fragile. So you wanna be careful. So I'm just going to cover both sides of this little wing with resin. That'll give it a little extra durability. And we are going to, that might go on this side. It's kind of bending wrong. We're gonna put our wings onto our piece. So I'm just dipping it in the resin. Add our wings. So cute. We'll do the next one. Just rub that resin all over the top, the sides, upside, downside. Then we're going to add right next to that wing. I gotta have some bubbles, guys. I know I got some in this room somewhere. Is this not adorable? It definitely needs some bubbles. So we'll put that little wing there. I'm gonna stand up so ugh, I can see what I'm doing here, make sure everything is where I want it to be. There we go. Oh gosh, I love it so much. And guys, look, I can make three more. I mixed one full ounce of resin and I still have over half, yeah, the dipping, yeah, it's just as easy to dip as it is to do anything else. I still have over half an ounce of resin. So this took less than half an ounce. So with one ounce of resin, you could do four to five dragonflies, okay? I'm gonna take these gloves off real quick. Be careful when you're taking your gloves off so you don't spatter that stuff all over you or in your eyes. I have glasses, so it doesn't, I have cover my eyes. Let me see if I can grab some bubbles. I know I got some bubbles somewhere in this place. Bubbles. Ah, ah, found some. Give me two seconds. I'm gonna scoop up a handful of bubbles. And I love this. This is so cute on this background. Yeah, Claire, that, if that's a problem we all have sometimes. Just dial it back a little. Um, I'm going to just throw in some bubbles here and there. I need to quit trying to place them. Ah, see what I did? Dropped one on my canvas and then, uh, or on my 
tarp, and then I put, I got some debris. So let me grab a toothpick and get this little piece of icky out. Yeah, this took less than half an ounce of resin. Super, super economical. So I'm gonna flip these bubbles because I can't stand it. I know, that's a little bit anal. If, I, if I'm doing a lot of bubbles, I don't worry about it too much. But if I'm just doing a few, I like them to be flipped on the correct side because they just look better. So, there. Guys, look how stinking adorable this is. Is this not cute? Oh, 